Okay. The definition says the interpreter generates a random number from 0 to 255, which is then ended with the value nn. So we will grab nn as well, which are the last two nibbles, which is a byte. And we will create a random number. to a new random the next int 256 as the last integer which we type in is excluded and we will end that with an n so we will type uh, we will notify the user vx has been set to randomized random number and we will actually do that random number and we'll increment program counter by 2 and we we'll need to cast it to a chart so here we go setting uh, where did it go so quickly Randomized 23. And it came from 16, 23. So in this case, the random number was the same as the ending. So the next code is E, which is a multi. Uh, code with only two codes, so that's not all that much. And we'll switch on the up code and the um, just the first bit or first nibble. And we got two cases, one which equals a 9e and a1, and otherwise it will be an unexisting operation and will crash the program. So, 9e, no, wait, we didn't encounter that one, so 9e and a1 are very, very similar. They both say e, x, 9e, and e, x, a1. e, x will skip the next instruction if the key vx is pressed and a1 will skip the next instruction if the key vx is not pressed so they're very similar and I will first do 9e so we will get the key which is the upcode ended with the second nibble shift it down eight times and then we will increment the program counter by two by default and if the keys key equals 1, which I defined as my press state, will increment it once more. But we also can say, we'll do it like this. And I'm actually going to do it like this, because it's a bit more clear to me. 
So this code can be exactly copied to A1 and then be made as doesn't equal 1 or equals 0. I will use 0. Yeah, I'll use 0. And let's have a look at the next key, but I think that game actually might... Oh, wait. The last two nope, nibbles. And actually the game might... Hold on a second. Did I forget something? Ah, yes, I did break as it did, does exist. So, there we go, and then we head into the A block, which is another quite big block. So, we will do that next week. So, I will see you guys next week. See ya. Hello, and welcome back to part 7 of how make your own emulator. We will just continue on programming the operations and I will quickly grab the operation table and there we go part 7 and the first one is upcode 8 so it's a switch and we got 8B02 and if you look at the table they all format with the first nibble and the last nibble so the last nibble is being checked so this is yeah two there we go uh two uh oh this is zero so uh, I will just replace it because it's a bit annoying. 2 is Z's VX to VI ended with V1. V so it's VX to VX ended with VY. So this basically means that our VX and VY will be bitwise ended to each other and then stored in the VX. So first of all we'll grab the X variable which is shifted down eight times in this kind of fashion. Thank you. And code or Y which is stored just a nibble further. We'll ch set VX to VX end it with VY. And of course this will cause a bit of trouble. And there we go. So we will <coughs> notify our user set VX to Vx. Now I want to do it before the operations. Vx and Vy, which is Vx ended with Vy. Now the single end, like this, is constantly the bitwise adding we've handled 
quite some time with it, so I'm not going to explain it at all again. So, well, wow, it looks gorgeous. So, let's increment the program counter <laughs> and let's cast some stuff to int. So it's actually readable. So this one was 12 and 31, which resulted, well, this is a different one, but B, ah, same thing. So <coughs> we, the next code is 84. So we'll add the case 4, which is adds vy to vx and the carry flag vf is set to 1 when carry applies. So I gotta explain a bit what carry is. The chip 8 stores their data in bytes. The byte means it only can store 256 values. If the value becomes larger than 256 or 255, it will uh, subtract 255 because it cannot store those. And in this case, we should also add, or when that happens, we should set the carry flag. And we should also set it to zero if it doesn't happen. So it's a bit tricky, but we can do it. We'll first grab X and Y again, which I am a bit bothered to do, so I will just copy paste it. There we go. And we will uh, print instantly adding V X to V uh, to V Y apply apply carry if needed. So we can do this basic counting in our head because not a big deal. So now the tricky part comes because we need to check if phi y and phi x equals larger than 255. We can do it sneaky like this, but do we really want to? I don't think so. So if we sh want to apply the carry, then um, phi y if phi y is larger than 255 minus phi x then we set the carry flag to one else we set it to zero. What this basically does is it will subtract f uh, Vx from 255. If Vy is larger than that, it will actually be larger than 255 and or carry will apply. And because I'm a lazy bastard, I will do this on the calculation because this will never overflow and that also makes me happy yay so this basically uh, will add vx to vy and then bitwise end it with 255 so if it's larger it will dr drop down to the correct value
And actually, I'm going to add it to the code because it's maybe still a bit too complicated to do out of your head. So we'll run to the next code. And well, it works. That part works. We should increment the program counter by two. How about that? And the next code is oh, uh, v6 plus 5 apply carry if needed. So the next code is f4. Uh, four. And 4 is another main code which is case OX4000 for XNN and this instruction is skip the next instruction if VX doesn't equal NN it's sim a simple instruction and we will do it X equals Upcode and it with the second level. Shift it down eight times and we will grab NN, which are the last two nibbles or the last byte. And we will then check if X does not equal NN, we will increment by four, else we increment by two. And of course, we will print what to do, what or what the program did with the code. Skips if v x doesn't equal an n. Skip next instruction if so, and actually, our game has become a bit playable. So, let me figure out what the controls were. And I think the drawing is messed up because something is going wrong big time with the big blur over there. And the uh, ball is not moving, and I have no idea. Which buttons I need to press. And I actually have no idea if I did the button correctly because I didn't really check it. My bad. Now my keyboard controller never works because I didn't add the key listener. So that's already my mistake. So with a bit of luck, it might work, but it doesn't. So I'll conclude the episode here. I will figure out what what is going majorly wrong, and I will uh, fix all those problems in part eight. So see you next week.